So today we are going to basically learn about simple harmonic motion, it's a unit 3 and it is also called oscillation. So start off with the definition. So it is defined that it is the to and pro oscillatory motion of an object about a mean position. such that the acceleration is always directed towards this mean position. and the magnitude of the acceleration is proportional to the instant Instantaneous displacement. Now, if you look at the definition, it basically um, is sort of a difficult one uh, to understand. But what it really says is that the acceleration is always directed to the mean position and it is directly proportional to the displacement. So, I'm just going to, going to explain it here. So, let's suppose A is the acceleration and X is the displacement. So let's suppose we have a spring system which is something like this and here we can call this as the mean position. Now if the spring is pulled to like extend it to one side so what will happen is that you will have a displacement like this. So if I'm taking this as the positive direction, which is like this, so we have a displacement. So you guys will see that the spring would want to come back to its mean position by accelerating towards it. So you see, if the displacement positive, then the acceleration will be negative. Similarly, when the spring is oscillating, so of course it will also come to a point where it will be compressed, so at that point the displacement from the mean position will be like this so let's call this minus because we took left as minus so the spring would want to you know just regain its equilibrium position which is the mean so it will have an acceleration towards it so first thing is you notice that the acceleration uh, is always directed towards the mean position so that's uh, our first thing and you see that it is always proportional to x but this negative sign shows that uh, acceleration will be always opposite to the displacement so uh, the negative is important because uh, these two quantities are vector quantities. Now what I'm going to claim right here is I'm going to claim that A is equal to, so when I remove the proportionality, equal to minus omega squared x where omega is the angular velocity that we have covered in the first chapter of uh, this course that's called circular motion now so this is my claim so if I'm claiming something I have to actually prove it but before I prove it I just need to tell you guys about few simple things those who do not take maths so I'm just going to create two sort of small 
that table so let's copy this down put it right here okay so here let's put some So let's say that we have a function of y, all right, and we want to derivate it. So what derivative really means is that uh, something, some quantity that is changing upon some quantity like this. So if two quantities are like changing, so derivative means um, basically the gradient at any point of the graph. So if we have a function of y, we would want to find dy by d um, x and that is basically the derivative of y with respect to x now how do we find the derivative so let's suppose if we have a function of sine x then the derivative would be cos x if we have a function of cos x so y equals to uh, sine x or cos x then the function will be minus sine x if we have a function of minus sine x so we will have minus cos x and then if we derivate a function minus cos x so we will have uh, sine x again so you see that whenever I am derivating sine it changes to cos but when I derivative uh, derivate sine you might realize that there is no change in the negative or positive sign so it will stay the same but whenever we are derivating cause it will change its sign so you can look at this now let's look at some uh, advanced functions so that we require for this particular topic so let's suppose if we have sine ax so there is a constant being multiplied so what are we going to do is we are going to multiply the constant outside and then write the derivative of the function as it is so that's cos ax if let's suppose it was uh, cos ax then because the sign would change i'll put minus here and the derivative the inside is a so a will come outside and then sine ax so the rest of the function remains the same similarly if this is minus sine ax so the derivative will be minus a cos ax because the sign would not change but the constant will multiply outside and the function will change now if it is minus cos ax then it will be just a and sine ax because the sign is changed and the function um, moves from cos to sine now let's move to furthermore to a bit more advanced one so if i'm finding the derivative of let's suppose a sine bx now there are two constants a is being multiplied with sine and b is inside so the inside function will multiply outside so we will have a b sine uh, sorry cos of bx so the rest of the function remains the same i hope you guys understand this now if the function is written a cos bx so the first thing we know is the sign would change so if a b will multiply outside so it will be a b sine of bx if it is minus um, a sine of bx so the sign would not change it will stay minus it will be a b cos bx and if it is minus um, a cos bx then basically it will be the sign would change so a b sine b x so that's our function right here now these tables are very important <laughs> because these these will help you derivate the equations quickly and i would um, want you to actually learn that properly 
So what are we going to do now? Now let's look at um, the equation that we really need to uh, create. So let me just give you a sort of a insight about it. Um, generally, the sine curve is sort of a curve like this. So if there's a function, let's suppose uh, x equals to x naught sine theta, so the function of sine would give you some sort of a equation where x is right here and theta is right here, so it will give you a sort of a function like this. If it is x equals to x naught cos theta, then basically the function would be something like this. All right. So these are general graphs of sine and cos. So let's look at what will happen if you're looking at a certain displacement. For that, the best thing you can do is you can relate the circular motion with um, the SHM. Let's suppose we're moving in an oscillatory motion, which is represented by a circle. So we are at point A. I'm just going to create Okay, my bad. I'm just going to create a nice graph so you guys get confused. Okay, now, so we have a displacement x here, and uh, we're looking at time. So, what we need to understand is that if something is moving in a sort of a function omega, so right now, if you look at the displacement that we have is actually zero so at time zero the displacement is also zero and putting a dot here so that is the point a now if something moves you know after half a quarter of time so it will reach the uh, top of the circle which is let's call this b and this will be the maximum displacement because if you look at it it will give you the maximum displacement which can be called as x naught. Now this is occurring at a time which is about a quarter of time so basically it will be right here and I can put the line like this. Now when it reaches to a point C so now we have uh, um, no displacement at all again because now everything has decreased to zero so which means at half the time the displacement again becomes zero like you can see you can actually track it down through the circle which makes it easy when you reach about three quarters of it let's call this so I'm just writing this is point B this is point C so I'm writing this D so after three quarters like from here till here so you might realize that now the displacement is there but this time it is in the negative direction which means if I track it down to three quarters of t right here so it is going to be like this and when I get back to the uh, point A again so it will after just one whole time so it will go back so it creates a sort of a sine wave right now how would we find the equation of the sine wave this one so let me just explain it here Let's suppose that if I draw a line like this, which is like that, so we will actually have a sort of a displacement which is on the graph like this displacement, let's call this x, which means that this line which I've drawn like this, so this line is x, whereas if I have claimed previously that basically x naught is the maximum displacement so also this line which is like this also shows you the the maximum displacement because both lines will be equally um, will have equal length as they both represent the radius of the circle now if you notice we have x naught here we have a 90 degrees here and that is the theta that we have moved now you guys know that sine theta is given by uh, opposite upon hypotenuse so this is a bit of a, a thing you should remember now sine theta would be equal to 
the opposite is x and the hypotenuse is x naught. So we get a function of sine where x is equal to x naught sine theta. Now previously we learned that omega is theta by t where it was angular displacement upon time. So we, what we can write is that theta is omega t. So I am going to use this equation in this equation. So if I replace this right here, so what I get, I get x equals to x naught sine omega t and that's what this graph would represent. Now I would just write things here. So basically if I look at the equation that I've just created, so x equals to x naught sine omega t this x is the instant tenuous displacement so basically at any displacement that you need to find this is the maximum displacement you can also look at from the graph we created or the sine curve this time is basically um, a particular time at when it's moving and w is basically the angular velocity now you just need to remember that basically we have to look for um, things like this so that you, you can understand that now we have found a sort of equation which represents displacement at any particular instant. So basically we know that let's suppose if we are looking for um, the movement of the spring, how far it has moved in a particular time. So we can actually find it through this particular equation. So let's write this equation. So it was x equals to x naught uh, sine omega t. Now looking at this equation then what we are going to do is we can actually develop the other equations like uh, velocity and velocity we have learned previously like in our O levels that it is basically the change in displacement upon the change in time now what it means is that this is representing the derivative of displacement upon the derivative of time. So this is where since our equation that we are going to derivate is the displacement one which is x naught sine omega t. So this is where our table that I showed you earlier what we wrote helps us. So if you look at it the equation sort of looks like a function a sine bx. So um, what you got to do is again you see this constant is being multiplied uh, for velocity I'm doing this so this constant is being multiplied inside so it will multiply outside so I'm just going to write omega x naught so it just multiplies outside and because it's sine it will change into cos and omega t so as simple as that we get the next equation which is w v equals to w x naught x cos omega t and that represents the um, velocity of SHM. Now, once we find um, velocity, then we can actually look for um, acceleration. And we have also learned from the definition of acceleration that it is the change in velocity over change in time. So, uh, acceleration is also the derivative of velocity upon derivative of time. You can also write change in velocity upon change in time. It's the same thing. So the equation that we now need to derivate is the velocity one, which is, I'm just going to write it down. It is V equals to omega x naught cos of omega t. And now the acceleration will be because this is the function inside and this is a cos function so you remember whenever there is a cos function which represents almost like this so it is a cos bx which is will be equal to minus ab sine bx so you can refer to that now 
what you're going to do is you're going to multiply it here when you do that it is going to be for acceleration omega square x naught because omega and omega will become square this will change into sine and because it has changed from cos to sine there will be a minus sign so this is as simple as looking at the table and applying these equations and you will be able to do it very quickly now if I you know put them in this sort of a hall of fame together so basically we have three equations we have displacement we have velocity and we have acceleration so the displacement was given by x equals to x naught sine omega t the velocity was given by v equals to omega x naught uh, cos omega t and acceleration was given by minus omega square x naught um, sine omega t now once we have all these equations what I'm going to do is I'm going to change it like a will be equal to if I write it as minus omega multiplied by in brackets x naught sine omega t so you might realize that this equation that I've just written right here is basically same as this equation which is representing x the displacement so what I'm going to do is I'm going to replace this and what I get instead of that just x which means that this is the same equation that I claimed earlier to be the equation of simple harmonic motion and if I go back to show you that so this was my claim and now I have proved my claim to be a equals to minus omega x naught square um, now you guys um, basically might be confused that uh, uh, how are we going to develop these equations because it seems too hard so I just want to tell you that the requirement of your course is that you remember this equation you remember this equation you remember this equation but you don't have to do the math here right it is no mathematics is involved the only thing you need to understand is that these three equations are you know representing different quantities uh, of so, uh, SHM. Now you don't need to remember this just remember these three equations and this fundamental equation that we have derived but if you do understand what has happened you can actually do it really quickly by just remembering this and then you know derivating it it will make your life very easy so you have to less to remember. So I hope you understand it if you have any questions please um, post it and I'll try to answer them. Thank you.